Hi everyone, uh, Roy here at Northwind, and it's fun, it's a, a quiet Sunday, I've got some plants in front of me, and I've just been walk, watching our customers walk through the benches, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, how in the world can anyone make any decision about buying anything when we don't really know what any of these plants are, who they do, and how they perform together? So I have great empathy for people shopping for plants, because basically they're just buying on that first date impact when you meet your first person in high school oh she's beautiful I, would she ever go out with me and then when she finally decides to go out with you which may or may not happen you're developing social skills so when i see people looking at plants i think it's like that first date in high school because nobody really knows what they want to buy and how they want to put the plants together so i've took i've taken some plants that i've enjoyed learning about this year and I'm going to show you some combinations you can make. This is Phlox Fashionably Early Lavender. I really like Fashionably Early. The Fashionable series is really nice. I think it's from Ball, introduced it. The flowers continue to bloom most of the summer. It grows in average soil, full sun to part shade. And look at when it's not in bloom. These little calyxes, parts of the flowers are a lime green. Green is a color. We always don't have to have screaming colors coming at us all the time. Green is a beautiful color, brown is a color, and I've heard Pete Outloff say that many times. So many things that we don't give uh, credibility to as colors are colors. So it's just opening up our senses to be more understanding. And guess what? Every time I become more understanding for me, I become more aware of more depth and beauty and what makes something beautiful. So I've taken this fashionably early phlox, which I, again I like because of long, prolonged bloom time, moments of color, of lavender with the green, lime green color. And I've mixed two or three of these together in a group. And off to the side, I put Geranium Magnificum. I might put two of these together off to the side of three or four of the phlox. Geranium Magnificum has beautiful foliage. It has blue flowers and forms a lovely mound. And it doesn't separate and fall down to the ground like Geranium Johnson's blue or Geranium Spinners. They flatten to the ground, you have to prune them. New foliage will come up after they're done pruning. You don't have to prune Geranium Magnificum. All you do is do something else with your time. It forms a beautiful mound and it has this lovely coarse but smooth foliage. And again, the flowers are blue. It blooms in late May and June. Makes a nice mound off to the next to the phlox. And then behind that, I put Penstemon Dark Towers. Penstemon Dark Towers has a kind of a purplish dark green foliage. That'll get about, uh, oh, maybe three and a half, three feet tall. And that would be the backing for these two particular plants. And your percentages can change based on scale of the garden. And if you have a smaller site, people will go, I can't do this, my yard is too small. Just, you can, when the plant comes up in the spring, prune some of the flowering stems off. You can reduce the scale of the plant by pruning off some of the flowering plants and springs. So you can fit a big grouping and turn it into a small grouping by pruning and also undercutting the plant foliage and the, or the plant roots in the spring, stunting the plant's growth. So there's many gardening practices that I am still learning, want to share with you, and that together we can create any kind of garden and any kind of space that's available. It's all doable. So let's get together and make this all work. See you later.